Take me out to California Take me out to California Hi everyone and welcome to this channel. My name is Holly Matthews and I'm a vlogger, a speaker, a self-development coach, an NLP practitioner, a mum of two girls and the founder of The Happy Me Project. And my daughters are, Brooke is nine, Texas is seven and I have found that they have got to a stage now in what is going on in the world where they're kind of like, yeah, the novelty's worn off a little bit and we've had to have some more conversations about what's going on. So I talked, I did a video already about this, about how to talk to your children about what's going on in the world. However, things are changing so rapidly, it is almost daily shifts and changes that I thought it was important that we had another chat about this and I shared with you just some thoughts and ideas about how to talk to your children. I mean the video that I did, the first video, feels like I did it about 3,000 years ago and it may well have only been about a week ago. I mean it's crazy. So on my vlogs that I've been doing and uploading it does say, I think today would be the 7th official lockdown day but in reality unofficially without the government telling us that we had to we've been in the house now for about 14 days I think around that roughly give or take so it is starting to get to the point now where new questions are coming up and um, those conversations have had to be had again so I'm going to share with you five things to think about is all I'm going to say things to think about when talking to your children about what's going on Number one, your fear is their fear, okay? You are their person. If you are calm or you appear calm, you do a good impression of a calm person, they will feel that it's safe and that it's calm. They hear everything. They see everything. We know this. Suddenly they're just there. They know what's going on. Those conversations that you're having with your friends, your, you know, your, your chats on FaceTime, your, your phone conversations with your mom, they hear it all. If you're a person that has the news on or the radio on, they hear it and it causes them the same anxiety as it does us. Only we maybe have perspective and, you know, see the world a little bit differently. They're going to see it very black and white. So we have to be very, very careful to make sure that we are working on ourselves so that our fears and our worries aren't getting offloaded onto them. Even if we're not meaning to, and I please don't ever think that I am immune to this myself. I might do all of the positive mindset work, but there are still gonna be times when I drop the ball and I don't get it right because we're human beings. But it is very important and more than ever, it's important that we work on ourselves first to make sure that we are showing up the best for our children and if we can maintain our own um, positive mindset and, and stop ourselves from spiraling into this fear mindset then we are going to naturally help our children. If we're telling them it's okay, it's okay because we're their people. You know, they trust, their world begins and ends with us. So we have to make sure that we are working on our own mindsets. If you are unsure of how to do that, then you have come to a great place because this is what I talk about here. This is what I do. I also have loads of tools for you. So I'm going to link below the Happy Me Project online. The first course is purely on the fundamentals of self-development. And that's a really, really good starting course to help you have some tools that you can use during this time. So it's a 21 day, perfect for lockdown, 21 day online self-development course. And each day you'll get an audio to listen to. You've got a workbook that you can work through and it's bite sizable, bite sizable, is that a word? No, it's not a word. It's in nice bite sized chunks so that it's not going to take up a huge amount of your day. I designed it that way on purpose. I designed it that way for busy people who work and now we are busy people who possibly work and homeschool and clean the house and mom or dad and everything else. So that's there for you. That's the tool that's already there. The Happy Me Project 2 is all about confidence and self-belief. So if you want to take it further again, there's that course linked below as well. But I'm also going to be showing up on Facebook every day in the week, in the weekdays, 10 o'clock, chatting, doing some lockdown lives. 
I am showing up in my Facebook group, The Happy Me Project Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. Please come in, join us, and um, there's stuff in there. I've also got guests in there as well. So if you want to work on your mindset, this is the place to be. And there's lots of free stuff, but there's also, if you want to go that little bit further, there's a few decent um, stuff that you could do that I'm just going to link all below for you. So I'll pop them in. But that's really important. Keep it on top of your own mindset is massively going to help your children to keep on top of theirs. You can pass on your calmness. So number two on my thoughts about chatting to your children is to check in with them. Where are they at right now? And checking in with them means, you know, ask them, what do you know? What, what do you think's going on? You know, depending on the age of the children, the age of my children, I will ask them, you know, how, you know, how are you feeling? How are you, um, you know, what do you think about things? Do you have any questions for me? All of these things are really important. Don't assume that just because you had one conversation about it that they get it because they don't, we don't, right? And even the other day, my daughter, Texas, who's bright as anything, you know, I've had a conversation with her, we do talk about things. Uh, just before bed, she was like, when are we gonna stop doing this now? And it's, you know, that is maybe me even dropping the ball and not making sure that, you know, I was having these conversations. So check in with your children, ask them what they know, ask, you know, open the doors for them to ask the questions. Number three, and excuse me looking off camera there, <laughs> I had to write some down. Um, number three, oh, this is a really important one. Remember that although we see the bigger picture and we know what life was like without this, we know what the, you know, we, we know stuff, we see a bigger picture. Children don't see that bigger picture in that same way. And they are enjoying many aspects of what is going on right now. They're loving being around you. For most of the people that are, are watching this and that are parenting at home right now constantly, it's new for the kids, it's not the norm. And so they're actually enjoying a lot of the stuff that's going on. They're probably at this stage kind of enjoying not being at school a bit and doing some other stuff and, you know, doing different things that they would. They're, there's, they're enjoying doing that kind of stuff. It's interesting because a child, a child's perspective is so different to ours. They are very much in the moment. And I remember when, and for those of you that don't know, please don't think I'm just dropping this bomb, but that's how it is. I have to say it's quite straight. But my husband died in 2017 of brain cancer. And at his funeral, before the funeral, everybody came to our house and the children were running around loving it. Everybody that they loved was in that room and they were running around and I think it was Brooke, the oldest, who said, it's like home alone when all the family's in that big house and like, it's home alone. And it just was such an honest reflection of how children see things. When we were at the wake at the funeral, the children loved it. They were running around, they were spinning around, they were playing, they were eating. It was, a, I guess, a nice let off from what was happening in reality, but they were in the moment and our children are in the moment right now. They're not thinking about finances. They're not thinking, unless you're talking to them about it, they're not thinking about um, you know, when will this end? They're not thinking in that same way as we are. They are thinking, this is a fun game. They're enjoying doing Joe Wicks's workout in the morning. They're living in the moment. So just remember that when, when you're feeling this worry and, and perhaps even a sense of loss for your children that they're not doing the things that we hope that, w that they would be doing in this time. Try to remember that there's lots that they're gaining from this and that they're actually enjoying many aspects of this. Number four is, again, it's a, it's similar to, the, to number three, it's to reframe, reframe things for them. So if they are feeling, you know, a little bit cabin fevery and they're, you know, they're starting to miss their friends or whatever else, try to remind them of the exciting things about right now that isn't it cool that you're doing your PE lesson online? Isn't it really cool that you can chat to your friends on FaceTime or whatever else? Isn't it exciting that we've done, like this weekend, I mentioned on a previous blog, uh, vlog, we did a quiz, so their Uncle Matty, who in reality we don't see every weekend, we see them now and then of course, but we don't see them every weekend, he did a whole quiz online for the kids, got dressed up in a suit, bow tie, kids loved it. 
the cousins played each other. That wasn't happening before. So if we could try and reframe it right now and say, isn't it cool that mom or dad's at home? Um, you know, this is, you know, this is it. Like we've just got to try and shift it in the same way we do it for ourselves. We start looking for the positives of things and doing things like asking your children to think about at the end of the day, I do this with my kids, asking them to say what has been the best thing about the day or what's the, you know, what's been great. What did you enjoy about today? Because kids are better at us in finding the little joys and just reminding them before they go to bed what was great is another way of just helping them to see this situation as really cool and exciting. Number five, and this is important for all of us, this is important for you as well and you maybe need to hear this, it's okay not to be okay. And you need to tell your children that it's okay if they don't feel okay about this, if they do feel angry or frustrated at the things that they've missed out on, the football club that they go to, gymnastics, my kids go to gymnastics, the fact that they're not seeing their school friends, um, you know, holidays that you might have booked, weddings that they were supposed to be at, whatever it is that they are feeling frustrated and angry and fed up about, allow them to, to feel fed up about it. Don't always try to fix it because sometimes it's just okay to say, do you know what, that's proper rubbish. It is. It's well disappointing. And then finding ways to let them get that out. So for me, being a parent of grieving children, I've had to come up with all kinds of ways of allowing them just a, to, a way to let off some steam. So some of my examples have been jumping up and down on a trampoline, um, screaming into a pillow when you feel frustrated, punching your pillow. I know that might seem quite violent, but if children are feeling frustrated and angry about something, they need to let that steam off in some way. And truth be told, we can't get out the house as much to do, you know, even if we are going on a walk and all that, it's not really enough for them to let off that steam. So finding something physical for them to jump up and down, do star jumps, um, act like a gorilla, anything, something silly that gets them out of that, that feeling but allows them to get it out. Maybe you've, you've got a really creative child that wants to do a picture about it and you can say it's okay if it, if it feels like an angry picture. My daughter Brooke's got a diary and I say to her, you can write what you want in there whatever you want all the horrible words that you know anything it's fine i'm never going to read that that's your space to get stuff out and i've said this before on this channel but in fact i talked about this on lorraine kelly as well but i allow my children to swear if they're in their own space in their own bedroom not just anywhere around the house anytime they want it's not a free-for-all but if they are upset and in the past it's been about their dad um if they're upset about their the fact their dad has died i allow them to get that out and swear and I get over it because they need to feel angry about that. They need to get that out. It's not a nice thing that's happened. And your children might be feeling just the same about this. Why can't they do their football tournament? Why can't they go and watch football? Why is the football not on the telly? You know, whatever else, and I'm just bringing up football a lot, but whatever else it is that your kids are disappointed that isn't happening, allow them to be angry about that. And you know what? They'll respect you more for that because you're treating them like human beings. Because adults, we as adults sometimes forget that our little people are just not us, Mark too, that they are their own proper little people and we're bringing them up to be fully functioning adults and with their own thoughts and feelings and stuff. So we need to treat them with a bit of respect. This is a big deal for all of us and they're feeling it as well. So it's okay not to be okay. Just remind your children that that's the case and that it's fine and that you'll be there when they have a moment. And we always talk about this in this house anyway, respecting other people's moments, respecting when somebody else isn't feeling that great. And we always keep an open dialogue and that's so we'll say, do you know what, I am feeling very good today. I need you to help me out by doing this. And the more you can be honest about your own feelings, about other, you know, siblings' feelings, you know, if one sibling's feeling fine, one's feeling frustrated, you have to have that conversation and say, do you know what? Gemma's not feeling great today, so we, me, you know, me and you, Thomas, we're gonna go and do something. We're gonna, we're gonna see how we can make Gemma smile today. Whatever, you know, we just gotta find ways to be real with our children. We cannot completely sugarcoat this for them. We can definitely get them to focus on the good stuff. But if at some point it's it sneaked through and they just feel a bit like cabin fevered out, then that's okay as well. 
let them acknowledge that emotion you know let them feel annoyed about that and you know certainly if you're in a position where you as an adult appreciate your own privilege which i'm in a position where i go i've got a house i've got a garden i've got food in the fridge i've got i've got money in the bank and um then and i'm healthy i appreciate all of that privilege regardless of any struggles that i might face i appreciate my privilege but i can't always go well you should just appreciate privilege to the kids because that's not fair on them they don't see the bigger picture in the same way that we do so we just got to allow them to be as well and yeah that's it guys that these are my tips for you i hope that it has helped and i really hope that you are feeling okay and if you're not it's okay just allow yourself to be be kind to yourself this is a massive thing for all of us and remember that your children love you even when you mess up even when we don't get it right just admit it <laughs> admit it when you get it wrong we've had a really a really like loggerheads kind of day to day but you know what we went they went to bed they went to bed lovely we had lots of cuddles i reminded them how much i love them i said you know what we we've been rubbish today haven't we we ain't been great with each other we got to be better tomorrow we'll be better tomorrow i love you i appreciate you i think you're brilliant i like you all of the stuff and they just go to bed happy because Kids just want to know that they're safe. That's simply it. They want to be safe and loved and probably also that there's some biscuits in. So if you can get some biscuits in, that's great for bribery. That's all I'm saying, if you can. They're a bit sparse at this time though. A little bit sparse. Um, but yeah, if you've got some biscuits and love and safety, your kids are on side. It's all good. I hope this has helped, guys. Make sure that you do tune into my Facebook Lives and on here daily. I'm going to be either uploading a vlog or I'm going to be sharing some pearls of wisdom of some kind. And if you like this, then subscribe to the channel. That would be amazing. And like it, thumb it, comment, all of that stuff. And spread, spread the love. Share it with your friends as well. Sending you lots and lots of love and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Peace. Take me out to Cal